Saludos a toda la afición de Lucha Libre Online. Este que les habla es Michael Morales Torres, integrante del equipo de LLO, aquí en directo con la leyenda viviente del rock. Gente, tenemos el privilegio de presentarles a nuestro invitado especial en la tarde de hoy, el vocalista de Anthrax, la leyenda viviente, gente del Trash Metal, Joey Belladonna llega aquí por primera vez a LLO. Sir, we're more than honored to have you here as our guest. As our guest, how are you doing today? Just fine, man. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? All right. Everything good here in Puerto Rico, sir. Thank you for asking. Uh, we're excited to have you. We're thrilled to be speaking with you today. As I mentioned in Spanish, you're a living legend inside the rock industry worldwide. That what you've done for multiple years many people are trying you know uh to get inspiration from you but i want to know how everything started in your career and your legacy as a rock star so how did everything started for mr joey belladonna inside the music industry uh you know i just loved playing a little bit of drums and all of a sudden next thing you know i'm listening to great records like the beatles and Just all kinds of really great music, you know, and all of a sudden I, I felt I wanted to be a, a singer, but a drummer at the same time. So that's kind of how I started, you know, doing both at the same time. So and, uh, I was going to ask, the, the music profession is uh, a romantic stuff for multiple people. Like it is either the best thing in the world, but for some parents you're going to die of hunger or that's the perception people or, or, or parents have a letter in America when their kids tell them, Hey, I want to be a musician. How did your family uh, reacted to you saying, Hey, I want to do this for a living. Well, uh, you know, I, they, you know, I had to beg my dad for $200 to buy a drum set. You know, I had to work, I had to work at that, you know, so that was a little bit of a push, but at the same time we had a basement and I could rehearse down there and it was plenty loud enough that the TV didn't accommodate my father's listening. So he put an extra speaker up to the TV, an old fashioned TV, he hooked another speaker up so we could play. So they were supportive to that point, but at the same time, you got to go get a job. And I said, yeah, I, I can work, but I still want to play music. So I never stopped. I kept doing the music. So I continued. And of course, they, once I got into Anthrax, you know, moving ahead, he was totally behind it. But they, they thought that, you know, you're going to have to get a job. You're not going to play in a band. You know, so like you said, more than likely, they're like, you know, you, there's no way you can do that. But I never stopped. And, and nor did he really push me out enough to make me stop. You know, they just were very, very hesitant to think that that was going to be a career for me. That's really interesting because in Latin America, it happens the same. Uh, parents, when their kids tell them, hey, I'm going to be a musician, they're like a little bit hectic. They're like, why are you going to do this? Uh, go get a real job. So you started and decided to prove your father wrong that you were going to actually be a musician. And an opportunity came up to your life. Uh, how did you originally heard that Anthrax was looking for a new vocalist? I got a call out of nowhere. Um, I was in a band called Bible Black, and that band was members from the first Rainbow album in a place called Ithaca. And I uh, decided I didn't want to stay for very long because I didn't think we were going anywhere. We weren't doing enough. So I, I ended up joining a band in another place, just not joining. We just put it together. Some kid came to my house out of nowhere and said he'd pay for everything, and I'm going to go to his house, and we're going to just be a band. I said, all right, why not? But anyway, long story short, I got a call while I was there. This band Anthrax wants you to fly in. And I, somehow the connection of the other band, Bible Black, they heard of me and wanted me to come in to check them out, you know? Uh, I didn't really feel like it was any kind of audition. I just felt like come down – We were interested in having you come up, you know, and I didn't really feel like I even auditioned that much. I, I just started singing a little bit of Journey real quick, and they kind of hit the floor a little bit, thinking, well, wait a minute. 
you know, I don't know what was going through their mind, to be honest with you, when they heard that. They just thought, well, it's, got, it's pretty quality, good quality here. It's not like, I don't know, not just strictly, you know, metal. Because I didn't really listen to a lot of that stuff at the time. I mean, the closest thing I got to that was Judas Priest, you know, Scorpions, White Snake, you know, Led Zeppelin and stuff. But I wasn't really thrashing out at all, you know. I just got into Iron Maiden around then, you know. There's an interesting, fa there's an interesting fact in your biography that says that your first official flight uh, in a plane was to do this uh, this audition, this tryout. Is this fact correct? Yeah, that, I mean, that was my initial. I went from a small place to a small place, and uh, you know, one of those propeller planes that were allowed. It was my first flight. Wow. You know, back then I had uh, the cassette player yeah. and uh, cheap old headphones. Could barely hear the music. It was so loud in there. <laughs> Man, yeah. that's incredible because this is your first flight. How do you felt knowing that your destiny could drastically change from the decision you were going to make of trying out for um, a new band? Do you expect that this to be as big as it got or you just went into a regular stuff like, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. You know what? It, it was cool to get a call out of like where I live is small, small town mm -hmm. and I wasn't really doing anything super professional. I mean, I thought all my bands were pretty decent, but we were never going anywhere, but to be, to get a call out of nowhere from anyone was kind of cool. So it's like, why not? You know, if they're going to, Send, send me a flight, but I, I've never heard of the music. I didn't know who they were. So I just said the hell. I mean, not that I wasn't excited, but at the same time, I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I had no idea what I was going to go see or if I'd even like the people. And even then, I it took me a bit to get used to what I was going to possibly join, you know, musically. Yeah. I wasn't, I mean, I remember my friend, God rest his soul, Scott Columbus. He was uh, the drummer for Man of War, and we, we were in a band together called Medusa of all things, right? How about that? Before I get into Anthrax. But anyhow, I, I remember talking to him going, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not really sure if I know I want to join because I don't know if I like, I don't know where this music is going for me. But I liked it enough to stick with it, you know? I mean, we, those guys had definitely had a good band together. I mean, they, they had a good sound. I mean, I couldn't pass up that part of it. I just wasn't convinced that I knew what I was getting into, you know? They're all from New York City. I'm from upstate. I mean, imagine like, you know, when you move into a town and you just meet people for the first time and you think you're going to fit into a neighborhood of friends and close-knit people. So it takes time, you know. And even to this day, I don't ever think I ever really fit in to that, to their, their um, lifestyle, York, basically. Yeah, their New York style of thinking. I mean, everybody's scattered around right now. But at the same time, I, I just never really found my full, I mean, I got along with everybody. I'm pretty easy, but I still never thought I figured it out, you know, to this day. So you decided just to take a leap of faith and, and start, you know, trying something new with them. You didn't know anything about Anthrax, but still you were so good or impressed them so big in, in your tryout or in your audition that they decided Joey Balladonna was the person they needed to take their band or that point took that band to the next level. When they notified you that you were going to be the person that was going to lead the band's vocals, how do you felt? Well, when I, when I was there, they, I mean, I even listened to them talk about me being there. And according to them, and I, I everything was kind of a blur. I remember, a little bit, but Scott even said, Hey, geez. I mean, I think they liked it so much when I was there that they asked me right away, like, do you want to stay? Like, do you got to leave right away or anything? Like, do you have any plans? Like, in other words, because I never gave them any indication yet that I wanted to join. I mean, uh, but I never really felt like it was an audition. I just felt like I was there. I could do what I could do, but I don't know what I'm up against. because I don't know what you guys can do, you know? So I, I was kind of on the fence. But I, I, I think I did pretty good, you know, enough, enough for them to think that I would be uh, sufficient for the, for the band. 
because that was different. And I obviously am very different for the band. I have a different style. I have my own style that's different from a lot of the thrash that's out there, you know? What do you recall of your first time playing with Anthrax on a concert, on a live concert? How do you feel? Do you feel that things were clicking? Do you feel comfortable with the ambience, with the audience, with the concept in the beginning? You know, uh, it was definitely a work in progress. Uh, um, with the speed and an uh, unfamiliar stage positioning, you know, just knowing where to go, how to feel, where to move, and all that kind of stuff. You know, at first, yeah, obviously it was a, a much broader excitement right off the bat. I mean, because most of my cover bands, if I was out front, you know, just kind of, I mean, it's just nice and easy. But this one is like, there was a lot of frantic stuff going on, and the music's busy as hell. So I really had it. You have to be on your guard musically. So it's a lot, musically, is a much more of a challenge. You know, the audience, the fans that Anthrax experience in their concerts. I've heard stories from people like Kenny Aronoff, for example, that uh, people used when they were pissed, they were used to speed at him. Uh, people were, you know, when things weren't going their way, the audience could make it difficult. Do you have any difficult experience with any audience at any place? And also, do you re can uh, recall uh, or relate any good experiences that you had with your fans as well? Well, it's funny. You said spitting, right? Yeah. Well, I remember being on the Master Puppets tour. They did that to Metallica and us, but that meant they liked us. They never got the concept. Of course, after a while, they, they quit that whole idea because it was just nasty, you know? Um, I, we didn't know what to think, but then when they were doing it to Metallica, we figured, okay, that means that they like the band, I guess. And it's like, that was, uh, yeah, it was just weird. Um, you know, we actually walked off from one show because we said, you know, three, four times, please, we don't want you to do that. Even Maiden had to put signs up and say, you know, forbid the wow. spit, you know, when we were up playing together. So, I mean, finally, somebody actually got on the horn and made sure that that, uh, didn't happen, you know. And good experiences with the fans. So, what uh, what, what stories you can relate? Uh, you know, people are, can be extremely nice, like bring you some gifts sometimes, or hey, I travel nine thousand uh, miles just to be here to see you playing. Like, do you have any kind of story with fans that connected you and the band directly? Uh, like just. Cool stories. Yeah. Hmm. God, I mean, that's a lot. That's a heavy one, right? Uh, I don't know. I have to think about that one. Um, are you just saying, like, at a show, maybe, or at um, a show, at a concert, or, or people? You guys were someone who came two days to get to New York, or the person that saved two years of your life. What do you say? Oh, my wife's giving me a, a nice little story. <laughs> I like. Half or half. What's the, what's the one you're thinking of? <laughs> she got stories two and a half. I mean, I what's what the, 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 the fan that saved ten years to be able to come to one of your shows. Oh, saved, saved, saved up ten, ten years. years. Yeah, somebody who saved up ten years to come to our show. Oh wow, that's an extreme amount of time. That I don't, I don't, I don't know if I remember if somebody told you that or they told no, me. The it. fan told me that. The fan told her that. Yeah. So yeah, you think of like. I mean, there's been plenty of people that I, I, I cherish their, their ambitions to see us that, that takes, uh, you know, uh, so much to find us. Like, cause some places we just don't come and it's just too far away. It's very complicated, you know, and uh, I, 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 it's fascinating. I mean, even just to be able to go to Puerto Rico, I mean, just to be there and, and only been there twice, right? And funny, I uh, give it a little shout to my friend, uh, JJ. He's from Puerto Rico. He just was there to finish, uh, find his, uh, go back to his home and to see his mom for the last time. He lost his mom while he was there as he landed. Wow. Uh, but uh, he's a drummer, and I met him in L.A. because he picked us up at the airport. And he was such a fan that we become friends, you know. And he's a really good drummer, too, but he's from Puerto Rico. So, anyhow, it's something like that, you know. It's, all those things fascinate me. You know, always remember it. It sticks into your your heart, you know.
every musician or almost every musician has uh, their own ritual, their own spiritual way to adapt and prepare before a big performance. What's Joey Belladonna's ritual previous to performing, if you have any? Uh, you know what? I, I Just the last show, I, I, I was just pacing around the room a lot. I have my now. I got my headphones on. I like to listen to music before I go. Um, you know, it, I, I just put on whatever gets me going. You know, I don't have anything in particular. It's just pick something that I, that I, and you know, I just stretch a little bit. Uh, have a nice hot coffee. I, I'm pretty easy going. You know, it's just just get my head in the space. You know, um, a lot of a lot of fooling around all afternoon. I'm just just walking around, talking with people, just burning a hole in the the building, just walking around and just just pacing. You know, I, I'm always just up for the day, you know. It's fun. That's about all. I really don't have anything special, you know. The life of a rock star can be complicated on the road and off the road. Uh, and I think that makes almost all of them saying it's coming back home and seeing their family. What was the thing that you, uh, you thought that, okay, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. What motivated you to marry your wife? Why she was, you know, the person for you and how does she uh, keep you a sane person outside of the stage? Well, I'll tell you, you know, when you, you finally meet someone, you can see the, you can feel the kind heart from, from someone. And you just, you know, when you just feel that moment of like, I think, I think this person could be someone I could live with, you know, and uh, would listen to me and, and, and care for you. And it's, it's nothing like after making that commitment and knowing that you're right. And finding out that that person is just so, so nice, so caring, so understanding. And it's nice to know that because that's, that's most of your battle and, and being in a relationship is to be friends, you know. And we're such good friends that we listen to each other all the time, trying to pay attention to each other's needs, you know. And that, that was what I saw. And that's what, it made me feel like I, I could do this. I could, I could definitely settle down with this person You know, because it's really hard to find that. And uh, truthfully, I, I'm just so delighted that, you know, that she's been that way for me. And, and to this day, is always helping me. I mean, a lot. I mean, more than I can even believe that happens. You know, the, the, the time spent and the frustrations of going through all this stuff for me, you know. I can't thank her enough to, to, to say, you know, for caring, you know. And... That's the way to do it, you know, and I feel I feel proud and happy and for her and myself to be together, you know. Joey, besides music, what drives your passion in life? What's the thing that that drives you that fuels your fire? I, I just I just like I like the whole the whole scene of uh, being, you know, as, as I've been singing and playing music for a long time, it's just. As of now, I've met so many people and the fans that, that do love and enjoy what we do. So it's just, it's just, that's one thing that just keeps, keeps me, I mean, even if I did it for a hobby and say Anthrax wasn't here, I still be, would be playing and thinking that I could go to a local venue and just make people go, wow, that was so good. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Can't wait to see you guys play again or something. As simple as that. That's what it kind of boils down to, you know? I, I like that, and I'm happy now that people love what we do, and I never thought that I would have so many people that dig how we do it and how we keep doing it. So, and I, and I look forward to all that all the time, you know. Music is great. You've toured all around the world. You had the opportunity to experience everything in the States and outside the States. This is basically a two-part question. What's your favorite state to perform in and outside of the U.S.? What can you say like, hey, this is the wildest crowd I've ever experienced and I loved it? Well, uh, it's so hard to say favorite places. I mean, there's some extreme 
frantic fans in like say South America. I mean, there's some, wow. I mean, some really, really, I mean, I even went myself on a solo tour uh, for the first time before I even had the chance to go with Anthrax to South America. I mean, it was intense. I mean, I'm talking like something I've never experienced. I remember trying to, <laughs> we left the gig one time in Chile and uh, we thought we could sneak out because it was pretty crazy. No way. They found us in the van and they were rocking the van. And I'll, I'll never forget that we just like, we were laughing, but at the same time, go, holy, holy crap. <laughs> wow, what's going on here, man? Yeah, it, it was intense. You know, that uh, I remember coming in with Anthrax and uh, to Colombia. Oh, man. I mean, then the air, it was like 8,000, some 8,000 something in altitude. El- altitude, And man, it, it takes the breath out of you but the fans were just they didn't let that bother them one bit man it was sick it was amazing you know i mean europe is amazing too i love that it's such a different uh set of uh fans that like different kinds of music you know they just a passion and in such a different way and i think america is a little different you know we have great fans here too but there's just extreme then in japan too they're they're very they're, they're so like happy, happy, happy that and I, I never you never see so much gener- generosity from people there, you know, and I love it. It's just it's so humbling, you know. So there's so many different places that we play that are a bit different than one another, but not one in particular, you know. What do you recall of your experience performing twice in Puerto Rico? Well, okay. Um I remember Remember the hotel? We were right by the water, and I thought that was amazing. I thought, you know, wow, this is, this is going to be fun. You know, where are we going to be playing, you know? Um, but now, I actually, as I say that, um, I was there on my own, a solo tour, and I had even more fun because the places we played – we ended up, one of the promoters got us a house. We stayed at a house with some people, which was like old, day, old days, you know. Like, you know, you guys sleep here, and you can sleep on the floor there, and we'll put a couple beds in this room. I'm like, oh, my God, you know. So we did that, and then they took us up to the, to the um, uh, what's that, um, the, up in the hills there with the water. Um, what do you call it? The, not the Amazons, but uh, I, I'm losing. Oh, like, El Junque, El Junque, the rainforest. Rainforest. Thank you. Thank you. And that was great. I mean, in the drive, we were just oh, up and up and up and up and up. And then I remember coming back down, the, the guy that had the van, he was going a little fast. And he, we got pulled over by the cops coming down there. And it was because his windows were too tinted. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, we had such a great time. I mean, the clubs, we, we played some clubs, and I went to a biker bar. Uh, and it was just amazing to, to, to go there and watch all the people there and do a little jam. You know, and uh, the few clubs we played were just electric. But Anthrax, of course, was was great with uh, 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 who's the famous uh, P- Pente? Pente? Uh, how do you pronounce his name? Percussionist? Uh, uh, Tito Puente. Tito Puente, yes. Playing there. I uh, thought that was a special place, a great venue. Uh, it was super cool. Uh, El Nino, I think, band was playing with us at the time. I think El Nino, if I'm correct. Just little things like that. I remember we played outside. It was, it was amazing. Um, and then when we came back again, it was another great show. It's just it wouldn't be nice to come back and play there more often, you know? It's not that far. You know, I don't know why we don't get to play there. Is it his birthday? Your... No. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh, was your birthday? Mm-hmm. My, My wife, again, chiming in. Birthday. Your 50th birthday. What, the first time or the second time? He asked what the memory he had of Puerto Rico, and I had to chime in because I went there... With you for my 50th birthday weekend. Oh, it was the second one. That's right. The second time, not the first time. Mm-hmm. Yes, because uh, I, 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 got, I got you a better seat that day because it was her birthday. <laughs> See how that works? I, See how wish I, think? I, I wish I had her memory. Yeah. <laughs> and she's always complaining. I, don't, I can't remember something. Or I can't find this or whatever. I remember my 50th birthday. Yeah, I know. That I do. I remember. Yeah, I just happy. didn't remember. It was, one of, it was the Puerto Rico. It so. was. Yeah, there I'll you go. I remember that. Maybe I should have just said that and didn't leave everything the hell out. 
No, that's no, that's kind of cool. You could do it. We did interviews last week together because it's it's kind of nice. We have this little bit of a banter going, you know, because I'll remember something, she will forget something. I'll, you know, likewise. Well, okay. she's she's the person that drives your motor. That's that, you know that's really good to know. You guys get along really really well. And I want to talk about something that's going to be happening this Thursday. Thursday, August 26th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fan Room Live. Joey Belladonna from Anthrax is going to be on Fan Room Live. So all the fans all around the world, from Puerto Rico, Argentina, Chile, Mexico, Spain, uh, Costa Rica, Panama, basically all Latin America, the U.S., Canada, U.K., all around the world can connect into one same place and experience uh, meeting the living legend one-on-one -on -one from the commodity or a comfort of your house. So Joey Belladonna is going to be available on Fan Room Live this Thursday, August 26th. Tickets available at fanroomlive.com, fanroomlive.com for tickets. What can we expect from Joey Belladonna in this uh, Fan Room Live experience, meeting his fans one-on-one? -on -one? Just a nice generosity and open our hearts together and, and talk one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, I, I, I've never done it before, and I, I, I look forward to being able to chat with somebody. It'd be kind of like one of my, like an evening and uh, with me, just to, just to talk and be normal, you know, and just ask, even if it's questions that you you, you always wanted to ask, you know, and it's, it's nice. I, I think it's great to be able to, because a lot of times we don't really get a chance to sit down with people. I don't, I don't, I don't get to talk with a lot of fans the way I'd like to, you know. And, and some people may not want to do that. I, I, I would enjoy it big time because I want to know more about what they have to say about themselves and what, what, what they like and how, how they like it and why, you know. It's basically experiencing, yes, the musician, but also the human side of the person that performs Joy Baladona. We can see the musician on stage, the living legend, but you're also going to be able to see the husband, uh, the person that, you know, travels with his wife to Puerto Rico for her 50th birthday. And, and those kind of stories is what people love to hear. So fanroomlive.com to all the fans all around the world is Thursday, August 26th. And you can follow Joey Belladonna in one single place. Go to joeybelladonna.com. Vayan a joeybelladonna.com. And there is you're going to have every single thing uh, where you can find him. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him on Twitter. You can find him on Instagram. You can find him on YouTube. You can find his music available as well as Antrax on Spotify, uh, on App Store, on, on Google Play. It's basically every single place where you can hear music. You can go there and get Joey Belladonna's and Anthrax's music. Because you're going to get either Anthrax or you can get Joey or you can get both. And that's the magical part about this. If you want a shout out from Joey, the legend, legend, the living legend himself, it's only on a single place. Go to cameo.com. Cameo.com is a place where you, Joey will personally greet you for your birthday, for a graduation, or just a shout out uh, when you are low in life or when you're happy in life. Go to cameo.com. He's the man who gives you the proper shout out. Uh, go get it over there as well. Uh, the most important part is subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel as Joey Belladonna. It's also a, a YouTube channel for Antrax as well as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, but go to Joey Belladonna's uh, YouTube channel. Go there and experience a little bit of his, you know, of his daily life and, and follow him in every social media uh, available just to see both sides, the entertainment part of the story and the human side of the story. Sir, before we go to our last words, I wanted to thank you for your time and thank your wife as well for allowing us to borrow her husband for a few minutes. That's very kind of her. Joey, what message can you send to the fans all around the world that have supported you for so many years? And the most important thing, do you feel happy with what you've accomplished inside the music industry and with your life as a person? Well, I'll tell you, the overall experience I've had has been just overwhelming. I, I am very, very happy that people just indulge in what we do and love it with a passion that I can't even describe. I, I am very, very humbled to be able to just entertain people the way that they love it. And I'm happy to, that I can actually do that because I, I, I'm still kind of blown away that what I've done 
makes people happy, you know, and, and they like it a lot. I'm a fan. I understand what I hear and what I like. And, and even if it's not too over the top kind of feeling about someone, it's just that it's like, wow, I just like it that much. And I can't, can't get enough of it. And I'm glad that they feel that way. And I, I'm so happy that, that the fans like what I've done. And I thank them so much for being so cool and so up, uh, upbeat over these years, you know, that's, that's fantastic. Man, you're a living legend yourself. Your legacy here inspired multiple people that are currently big stars in multiple bands. So we just wanted to thank you so much for granting us part of your time to for sharing your story with us and always wishing you and your family success in your career and in your personal life, sir. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. You're awesome too, by the way. Thank you, sir. And let's wrap this up in Spanish. Este fue la leyenda viviente, el vocalista de Anthrax, Joey Belladonna y Michael Morales Torres para LLO. <laughs>